Okay, Van Sire. Um, this is some analysis and extra notes for Act 2, Part 1, the section we watched and looked at uh, last week. So I asked you to go through and concentrate on death and sexuality um, as your kind of main theme, um, but also at the same time concentrate on Brick and Big Daddy's relationship, the nature of communication and the relationship between truth and lies within the play. These are your overarching themes that cover the play as a whole. And you should always be trying to connect um, the kind of characterization, the staging, the structure, the relationships within the play to these bigger themes, because that's what we're really looking for in a really good literary study essay. So first of all, Act 2, um, Part 1, our main themes that we're concentrating on are the idea of death and of sexuality as well. So Act 2 begins with the appearance of Big Daddy, the character that has been mentioned a lot, built up, and we've already got a kind of clear idea of what he's like at the beginning um, from other characters' a perspective of him, the way they discuss him, and obviously the his illness. Um, and we've got this other example of dramatic irony again, which I'll come into in a bit more detail in a second. So first impressions of Big Daddy then. Um, his entrance um, shows the relationship of the household to him. He is the patriarch. He is the man in charge that everyone looks up to, that everyone um, is scared of, um, yearns for his respect, eager to have some form of relationship with him. Now that could be for a variety of reasons, selfishly, so they can inherit his money, but I also think there is a real need to um, gain his respect because it's so difficult um, and they're so eager um, to, to, you know, get him in some way for him to like them. So our initial impression um, is a little bit contradicted um, by Williams' stage direction. So he says here, Big Daddy appears first, a tall man with a fierce, anxious look moving carefully not to betray his weakness even or especially to himself. So yes, he is a formidable character, but even within that, there is a kind of paradox that he presents himself as this hugely fierce man who's all knowing, all powerful, but actually is incredibly self-conscious and does not want to appear weak in any way, any um, shape or form. Um, and that's something that's going to be quite important, I think, as um, we continue to analyse his character. So our initial first impression is already coloured by the way the characters are spoken about in Act 1, but also that stage direction as well. It's also interesting that the kind of first thing he does is speak to his son, Brick, um, and that talks or tells us a lot about the relationship he has with Brick. Um, and essentially, he um, is very crude. He dismisses, he dismisses Brick very quickly. Um, and that information we find out about Mag from Maggie at the start that um, he is he is who he is and doesn't lie about it. Um, well, is very much confirmed in how we are introduced to him. Um, we also see um, the way he treats Big Mama um, within this part, and it's. It's quite shocking for us, I think, as well. Um, he has absolutely no respect for her whatsoever. Um, he is completely belittling. He um, is downright mean um, and embarrasses her um, in front of everyone. And also, at the same time, he seems to enjoy it. He seems to get a kick out of how, how horrible he is. But he doesn't care. Um, and that, I think, shows you a hypocrisy about the whole family in itself. Big Mama is an embarrassment in terms of how she deals with the reverend, the kind of sycophantic way she fawns over Brick, um, the way she is so over the top of her love with Big Daddy. You got Brick's drinking um, and his kind of very public um, injury um, while being drunk. Um, and you've also got Gooper and May who are, you know, the biggest gold diggers you've ever seen who are clawing um, and desperate to get Big Daddy's approval. So we really do get um, a very clear uh, first impression of Big Daddy through these relationships, but it also helps us understand the family dynamic as well. You should start to see a little bit of a connection between Big Daddy and Brick as well. Um, his anger, his raging frustration, um, the difficulty they have in their marriages, their, um, I suppose, frustration and um, dissatisfaction, they're very, very similar in that respect. Um, and yes, Big Daddy is cruel and we're starting to see elements of that from Brick as well. Um, 
the in terms of Big Daddy's revelation towards death, there's a kind of clear dramatic irony here. We know that Big Daddy's going to die. We know that he um, does have cancer and the family are just lying to him. But he kind of sees it as um, like he's invincible that, you know, when he dies, the world dies around him. He is so important within this family that he can't even consider what the world would be like without him. So therefore it wouldn't exist. Um, and I suppose that makes us maybe feel a little bit sorry for him in some way. Um, it makes us think that he is maybe in some kind of denial or perhaps he does know and just refusing to accept it. These are things you want to kind of think about um, and consider. Um, and the way he speaks to Reverend Tucker as well, uh, kind of poking fun, laughing at him. Um, he's not a very religious man. And again, he doesn't care. Um, he goes on to talk about the kind of corruption he's witnessed in Europe and North America later on in the act, which I'll come back to. Um, but we also start to see um, this kind of highly sexual and animalistic side to Big Daddy as well. Um, he even starts to talk about um, how his relationship with Big Mama and the fact that he finds her disgusting um, is important because again we start to see that connection with Brick um, at the same time um, that Brick sees um, Maggie as something similar except we're not quite sure why yet or what has really happened between them and I think the reason why he's not obsessed with Brick but the reason why he's so um, connected to Brick is that he perhaps sees himself in him um, and he really wants to have Brick carry on that legacy and have Brick be the one to carry on the family name and that persona of Big Daddy. But as we know, Brick himself doesn't care um, in the slightest. And I think this whole section is marked by his attempt to dominate his family. He is in control. He is in charge. He will humiliate. He will tear down. He will do anything at all um, to his family because he doesn't care. He does not care about the repercussions. Um, and I think the family as well are constantly in like deference to him because one, they're scared he's going to find out the real reason um, about his illness. Um, but two, I think that they're just so intimidated by him. And Big Mama seems to be incredibly confused and hurt by his out and out uh, public rejection of her. Um, and she's crushed and humiliated. And this act, this part of act two ends with... Um, him all by himself with his birthday cake um, blazing away with the candles and then the fireworks going off. Um, and so we're kind of left with a, a sad view of the man, but again, he doesn't care in the slightest. So in terms of the links and what this suggests, so Brick and his father do seem to have similar marriages. They're both very unhappy. They both um, are not interested in their partner sexually. And um, they almost take it out on their partners, that their frustration and their hatred um, is taken out on them, that Maggie and Big Mama bear the, the repercussions of this frustration. Um, I would also say the structure of Big Daddy's and Brick's relationship um, acts as a mirror is because it's constantly trying to reinforce the um, aloofness and the isolation of Brick's character and also that communication with him is incredibly challenging and incredibly difficult because he does not want to communicate. He is trying to keep everything so dampened down with alcohol and hidden away um, because he's so scared of maybe letting out the truth. And we have that kind of almost monologue stroke soliloquy from Big Daddy like we had with Maggie um, at the same time because Brick just doesn't care. Um, and these characters are almost using him as a sounding board. Um, in terms of the links between the philosophy of Big Daddy and Maggie, Maggie remembers came from poverty um, and is very much about ownership and about goods and having things. And I would say Big Daddy's a bit similar um, in that respect to him. He is a self-made man and he is important because he has this wealth, he has this money. Um, and Maggie, I suppose, is similar in the fact that she knows what it's like to not have money, so she's going to grip onto it as much as she can. Um, and I think the communication, as I said before, is hard between Brick and his father because their relationship isn't natural, it isn't uh, close. Brick has changed and <coughs> something has happened um, to Brick that has caused this change in him. Why he's drinking more, why he's pushing everyone away. 
Um, and I think that Big Daddy's desperate for Brick to be the son that he's always wanted and the son that he deserves for being a man like him. But Brick just isn't interested and doesn't want to be that person. So in Act 2, Part 1, um, we start to see... I suppose, the fragility of Big Daddy, um, which is directly contrasted with the persona he he has when he's dealing with his family and the way he speaks to people. Um, and we also have this continuation of Brick's, I don't know, ultimately, like, downfall, his ultimate downfall, his, the fact that he is changing so much and the fact that he is moving further and further away. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, you will have access to quotations from me once we've finished analysing this act. Um, but obviously, I would start to go through this section, pick out your key quotations um, and really concentrate on Big Daddy's character, um, what is revealed about the relationships and really stick with the, the themes that we've got uh, up at the top here. OK, thank you.